Welcome to our demonstration on deploying a VMware vSphere Data Protection Virtual Appliance. vSphere Data Protection, VDP, is deployed from an OVA file which we have already downloaded. An OVA file is a single file that contains an OVF template. This template consists of files that will make up the VDP Virtual Appliance, such as the VMX file and VMDK files. To begin, click Actions and deploy OVF template. Select Local File and click Browse. Choose the vSphere Data Protection OVA file, click Open, and click Next. After reviewing the details, click Next again. Accept the End User License Agreement and click Next. Now we must provide a name for the virtual appliance. Note that this name does not have to match the fully qualified domain name of the appliance. We already have a VDP virtual appliance named VDPA01. So we will call this one VDPA02. We select Data Center for the location and click Next. For the compute resource, we choose Cluster and click Next. We'll deploy the virtual appliance to the Data Store cluster storage. Since this is a demo environment with limited capacity, we select Thin Provision. However, it is best to deploy VDP using thick provision disks. Click Next. VDP requires a static network address. We connect the virtual appliance to the VM network static port group and click Next. Here, we provide the networking information for the virtual appliance. Click Next and then click Finish. It will take several minutes for this process to complete. Now that the virtual appliance has been deployed, we select VDPA02, click Actions, and power on the virtual appliance. The process of booting the VDP virtual appliance may take several minutes. Once the appliance is fully booted, use a web browser to complete the setup of VDP. Note that we access the vSphere Data Protection Configuration Utility using port 8543. Enter the default password and click Login. Click Next. Before the virtual appliance was deployed, we created a DNS host record for the appliance. VDP queries DNS to pre-populate the information in network settings. We verify the information is correct and click Next. We keep the default time zone and click Next. In the VDP credentials window, select a new root password for the virtual appliance and click Next. Here we enter the username, password, and the IP address for our vCenter server. Click the Test Connection button to verify this information is correct. Click OK. Click Next. Since we already have one licensed VDP Advanced Appliance, it is assumed we want to enable the advanced functionality for this appliance as well. This is why the Enable VDP Advanced checkbox is checked and the license key is populated. Click Decode, OK, and then click Next. There are two options for backup data storage, Create New Storage, and Attach Existing VDP Storage. We will stay with the default option in storage capacity and click Next. Again, because this is a demo environment, we will change the storage provisioning type to thin and click Next. No changes are made to the number of virtual CPUs and memory. Click Next. The last deployment step is the option to run a performance analysis on the storage. It is a best practice to verify the storage meets the performance requirements for VDP. We click the checkbox and click Next. Click Yes. At this point, VDP will configure and analyze the storage. Note that this process can take from 30 minutes to several hours to complete. Once the performance analysis is complete, the results are shown. The virtual appliance must then be rebooted to finalize the configuration. VDPA02 has been rebooted and is ready for use. This concludes our demonstration on deploying a VMware vSphere Data Protection virtual appliance. Thank you.